You're watching WSB Now's Access Atlanta, your source for local things to do, weekend events, travel destinations, and so much more. Watch and discover how to make the most of your weekend. Get ready for a fun, exciting weekend in Atlanta. First up, Oyster Fest. Come on out to Atkins Park for the ninth annual Oyster Fest. Enjoy raw, grilled, and fried oysters while experiencing live New Orleans-inspired music in a Mardi Gras-style environment. Tickets are $12 per day at the door. Kids 12 and under are free. Grab your friends and hit up the Atlanta Wings Pub Crawl. More than eight different restaurants and bars will be participating in this lip-smacking event. Enjoy wings, beer, and more. Tickets are $22. You won't want to miss a performance of the Broadway hit, The Band's Visit at the Fox Theater. It tells the story of human connection and commonality between cultures, and it's the winner of 10 Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Ticket prices vary. Celebrate the 90s at Fernbank. Pull out the flannel, grab your favorite slap bracelet, and relive the decade that brought us boy bands, the Macarena, and TRL. This adults-only party will be banging as Amped Entertainment plays all the hits from the 90s. This event is for 21 and up only. Cost is $21.95. It's time for some hoops. Cheer on Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks as they take on the Washington Wizards at the State Farm Arena. Ticket prices vary. Now you have everything you need to make the most out of your weekend in the ATL. Enjoy. This gallery and the collection that we're displaying in it obviously really raises the museum's profile and the European collection to a whole new level. The recently opened Shaheen Gallery at the High Museum of Art is making quite the impression. The paintings are from mostly from the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist periods and some examples of early modernism. The permanent collection includes 24 breathtaking works from French artists in the late 19th in early 20th centuries. A single collection um, coming from a private source, from a single source, is very unusual, I think, in, in any museum. Doris and Shuki Shaheen spent four decades collecting these prized pieces and then gave them to the high as a gift. And I think it was just their wish to share and give back to the community the things that they have enjoyed for this long. What was once tucked away in a private house is now on full display, giving visitors the opportunity to see beautiful art in a whole new light. Not many museums outside of the, the big five can boast uh, this such a great number of terrific and wonderful, beautiful works. A visit to the College Football Hall of Fame in downtown Atlanta will have you singing, kicking, and reliving some of the greatest moments in your team's college football history. The journey through college football's greatest moments, players, stadiums, and more begins here at the Helmet Wall. Every single college football team in America represented on this wall, 778 teams. It's the only place in America you're going to see that. Once visitors take in all 778 helmets and locate their teams, it's time to register. And this is what makes a trip to the Hall of Fame unique for fans from different teams. Registering provides fans with an all-access pass, a pass to their visit to the Hall. Make an appearance on the college football game day set and make a prediction for the big game. It's stored to your all-access passes locker that you can access long after you've gone home for the day. Paint your face for the big game. Perform your team's fight song. It's all stored for you to relive again or share. The all-access pass also is the key to much of the interactivity. A Bulldog fan doesn't want to learn all about Georgia Tech's history, and a Yellow Jacket could care less about those darn Bulldogs. With the pass, when a Tennessee fan approaches the 52-foot touchscreen wall, at the Why We Love College Football area, they can sing Rocky Top. A Miami fan is going to learn all about the U, and a Texas fan can hook them horns with Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams. The hall has over 65,000 pieces of digital content, and it's constantly growing. I wasn't expecting to see some moments from my alma mater, um, University of Arkansas. Um, getting to see some moments of history that I'm familiar with and was a part of, that was, that was a surprise. The interactivity doesn't end there. Can you kick a field goal? Make a touchdown throw? Win the game on a diving catch? Put your skills to the test on the indoor playing field? 
Afterwards, get some tips from Peyton Manning. He's waiting for you to walk up to him. And when you do walk up to him, he's going to tell you about all the regimen, how he ate, what his studies were, you know, how, how he kept a healthy lifestyle. Um, and that, I think that's a really important piece of what we're doing as well, is trying to bring the fan closer to the players. After talking over the game with Peyton, check out something he was never able to put his hands on, the Heisman Trophy. The National Championship Trophy and other top awards can be found in the Hall of Fame. Just being a football player, those kind of things, you know, some of the things you strive for and just getting to be that close to them, it was it was a great, it was a powerful moment. Oh, All was blocking, they got him, they got a wall going. Uh -oh, for Access Atlanta, I'm Nelson Hicks. Hey y'all, my name is Ben Brash. I'm here at New Realm Brewing with Access Atlanta, and I have the uh, pretty unfortunate job of drinking some beer and eating some food today, but um, I think I'll make it. Come along. New Realm Brewing is not like many other local breweries in Atlanta. The craft beer destination for former Stone Brewing brewmaster and IPA expert Mitch Steele and his veteran beer business partners Corey Falcone and Bob Powers is situated in Ponce Highlands steps from the Atlanta Beltline with dramatic panoramic views of the Atlanta skyline and equally stunning multi-level vistas inside. Hey, here I am with Bob Powers at New Realm Brewing. Can you kind of give me a sense of what makes New Realm unique? One of the things that makes New Realm unique is this building. We Wanted to be on the Beltline in Atlanta. We wanted to be near Pont City, and we never thought we'd find this building. But I think, uh, as you'll see, there's 20,000 square foot of space in this building. Um, has a lot of different uh, areas. There's like seven different places you can go in the building uh, that are, offers a different environment in every single place. So I'd say the second thing that we do that's different is as good as Mitch is on craft beers, uh, chef Julio Delgado is as good with the food. So if you talk to Chef, he'll tell you people come here for the food. Mitch will tell you they come here for the beer. Here we are at the bar, and you've been so kind so as to make us uh, what looks like a bunch of delicious food. Can you kind of give me the rundown of what we have here? Absolutely. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a menu for all tastes and likes. Uh, we have 34 items on our menu. Uh, we have from everything from pizzas, burgers, beer can, chicken mac and cheese, tacos, we have a little bit of everything. Our main goal is we want to be a brewery inspired kitchen. We want to make food that go well with beer. Absolutely. One of my favorite beers is a Fornia Pilsner. This beer is a classic uh, combination of the traditional German Pilsner. This beer it has, it's for beauty free golden color with a really nice white spuma on it. It's very light, it has these nice fruity uh, aromas into it. So it's a great combination to any item on the dish that we have. Okay, great. Sounds like we'll be drinking that. And uh, I guess we should talk to the guy who made that beer, don't you think? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, talk to the master. Deal. <laughs> so, Mitch, can you tell me where we are right now? So we are right in the middle of our brewery. Uh, right, uh, We're surrounded by the pilot system here. This is a five barrel small batch system that we use to brew creative beers and experimental beers. What are you seeing as the most uh, popular so far? Well, it's hard to tell because we haven't had a full slate of everything on at the same time. Uh, I but, see, I see. Uh, the IPA, Hoplandia IPA is doing very well. Well, you're known uh, for your IPAs, right? Well, I have 10 years of brewing a lot of IPAs under so, my belt. Oh, so. okay, maybe, maybe. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, so, yeah you're, you're just starting now. You'll do it right, kid. All right. Yeah, you think so? I... <laughs> I think it's time that I actually test out the beers myself. Yeah, do the taste test. It's the most important part. I think I'll do that. Okay. Well, y'all, I might have had a couple more beers than I needed to on this assignment, but that's what a journalist does. A journalist is thorough. Reporting for Access Atlanta, this has been Ben Brash.
The National Park Service preserves urban regions, places that link us to our culture and our past, like Atlanta's Auburn Avenue. Right there on the corner of Auburn and Boulevard, there's this old fire station that we feel like it's been there forever, but talk about the significance of it. Well, that fire um, station was actually the first fire department that was integrated in the city of Atlanta. Uh, but when Dr. King grew up here, it wasn't. It's, it's part of segregation and it was a white only fire station, but it protected the, the homes in this area. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in there now, you're kind of stepping back into time. You're stepping back in time, and complete with a, a an old fire truck, and you can go up and look at it, and there's uh, exhibits in there as well. The Park Service also oversees historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, which was founded in 1886. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s maternal grandfather was pastor of Ebenezer, and later Dr. King's father led the church. Dr. King also served as the church's co-pastor. Part of the National Historic Site, of course, is the birth home of Dr. King, which, which those of us who live in Atlanta, we know it's here, but we may kind of take it for granted that it's also part of the National Park Service. Dr. King grew up here as a little boy, and one of our um, responsibilities is to try to maintain this neighborhood in the way that it looked then, but also um, there are families that actually live here in this neighborhood, so uh, we are a part of making that community continue on. So the National Park Service also maintains many of the houses right along the street on Auburn. That's correct. That's part of the uh, historic district. So there are certain requirements and standards that we try to maintain and um, so that it does have the look and feel. So one of the important things about coming to a site like this is having a sense of place and putting it in context. And that's what we strive to do when you come to visit here. Welcome to the Sweetwater Brewing Company. I'm Heather Catlin here with the Brewery Experience Manager, yep. Derek, and he's going to show us all around this place, show us what goes into the magic of making their popular beers. Let's go check it out. First things first, safety. Okay. Put those on. Now you can see all the magic. Do I look as good as you? Not quite, but almost. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. I can already smell everything. It smells delicious, like fruit. Yeah, so this is our pilot brew house area. So we have our large brew house out back that we do our year round stuff, stuff for the markets. Uh, this is kind of our brewer's playground area. Uh, so this gives a chance for our brewers to come up with a new recipe that maybe they've been thinking about uh, without us having to do it on a big system. So they can uh, do it on a smaller scale. Beers from this system go on tap in the tap room. Then one day one of these may grow up to be either a seasonal or uh, one of our variety pack beers. Um, all of those come from this system, so this area is really exciting. For so it's members. all based on consumer response on what yep. you end up bottling. Yep. That's great. Uh, this is our testing ground. The Sweetwater Brewing Company has been making tasty brews since 1997, but a lot has changed since then. They went from making just a few different types of beers to having an entire area where they're constantly testing out new flavors. So break it down, how many bottles of beer is in this one thing? So it's 2,600 kegs worth of beer, so uh, oh my God. that's a lot of, that's a lot that's of a kegs. Lot of keg. If you were to drink a gallon of beer a day, it would take like 150 years to drink one of these. So uh, a lot of beer is in here, and this is where final sampling is done. So every morning at 11 a.m., our brewers pull themselves up to go sample all these beers to make sure they taste right. Oh, I it's feel a hard so job. bad for them. Yeah. If they check out, our brewmaster gives his check of approval on it. It gets marked for packaging um, and we'll fill it into a can, bottle, or keg next door. Sweetwater offers tours for just $8 to anyone with an ID and closed-toed shoes. You'll get 15 ounces of samples along the way, or you can hang out at the bar and sip some exclusive beers only served at the brewery. Prior to 2012, uh, we could only do about 3,000 cases in a normal workday. With this expansion that we did, uh, this allows us to do 10, 12, even up to 15,000 uh, cases in a normal workday. We'll fill about 300 bottles per minute. In this case, we're bottling 420 today. Okay. Uh, so it's just a green blur once it goes through the labeler. It's fun getting to see the bottling line run. Monday through Friday, we're bottling and canning. Um, and then kegging, we also do two to three times a week as well. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Y'all can leave. I'm just going to stay here and we're going to drink. Yeah.
Those are real knights, and yes, those are even real weapons. I'm Brittany Tenenbaum with Access Atlanta here at Medieval Times, giving you a behind the scenes tour of their fun, action packed experience. Let the games begin. Welcome to Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament, where you can experience sword fighting nights, horses, jousting, and more. The massive Atlanta castle, which opened back in 2006, immediately takes you back in time. I'm Jason Jones. I'm the head knight, which means I'm the head trainer of all our knights and squires here at our Medieval Times of Atlanta location. For training as a knight, everyone begins as a squire. You come in, you have to work in the stables, you have to learn all our horses. We do have 23 horses here. If you have, you know, the physical capability, the drive, the passion to want uh, to move to the next level, that's where we kind of evaluate you. Between the choreography and just learn how to ride a horse, you're talking like 500 hours of, of training alone before we put you in front of a live crowd. To get the full experience of medieval times, you know, we take you back to the 11th century. You're going to enter into our arena. You're going to be in a section. As you see, we have the yellow knight, the red knight, the black and white knight, and you're basically going to cheer on your, your knight to victory. We're also jousting and fighting in the show. We run full speed at each other on our horses and joust each other. This year, the new show is led by Queen Dona Marie Isabella. Here in our 11th century Spanish style castle, we'll have a dinner and tournament. That means you'll be served a four course feast as the show is going on. So the feasting options here at the castle include tomato bisque all the way over to a half roast chicken. And there's also vegetarian options as well. And adults might be happy to hear that they can enjoy a full bar at the Queen's Tavern. Their new show titled Sovereign debuted in November of 2018 and includes all new choreography, music, costumes, and lighting. What can we expect when we step foot into Medieval Times to enjoy the show? Well, as guests, guests arrive, they'll cross the drawbridge and enter the gates of the castle. And they'll spend uh, some time in the Great Hall, enjoying drinks from the Queen's Tavern and getting to know the royal family and all the nobles. The show itself is friendly for all ages. Uh, in fact, my little ones come all the time to see Dad perform, but uh -huh. uh, we have company parties that are held here. We have bachelor parties and, and uh, bachelorette parties that come. So it's great for all ages. That's a wrap here at Medieval Times. To book your magical experience, head to MedievalTimes.com. For Access Atlanta, I'm Brittany Tenenbaum. You're watching Access Atlanta on the WSB Now app, your source for local things to do. Unlike usual sports fans, golf lovers aren't cheering from the stands nonstop. Golf is a quiet game, but what if I told you you could turn up the excitement just a notch? I'm Nadja Parker with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and I'm ready to show you behind the scenes of one of Atlanta's top attractions, Top Golf. I'm here now with Brian. He's the director of sales at Top Golf. Right now, we're in the bar area of Top Golf. Now, run down some of the fun things on the menu. What can people look forward to eating? We try to do things that are a little bit different, uh, add a little bit of the Top Golf flair to it. Uh, one of our most popular signature items is going to be mushi. Um, so it's our take on sushi. So think uh, okay. Mexican sushi. Um, it's going to be rolled up, served like sushi, uh, chicken, drunken beans, and rice. Uh, really creative and sliced and served just like a sushi dish. From the dessert side of things, we have our signature injectable donut holes. Think cinnamon sugar donuts that you self-inject either barbarian cream, chocolate, or raspberry uh, injectors in it. Really cool. All right, it is time. This might actually be my favorite part of the night. Let's dig in here. Matter of fact, I don't even think I need the, my knife and fork. Mm. Okay, I still have some room for dessert, so let's get into these injectable donut holes. Let's see. I'm gonna go with chocolate. Ooh, yes. It's really nice and crispy on the outside, but when you get to the inside, you get to all that good fluffiness and chocolate on the inside. It's so good.
We're now here with Elena. She is the Director of Instructions. So please help me out. For somebody who has never touched a golf club, what kind of services do you offer for beginners? For my beginners, I always like to work from the ground up. So I will work with alignment, setup, posture, grip, um, basic the fundamentals to start with. And once we get those down, then we can start working on positions and more technical stuff. But really just getting somebody comfortable with holding a golf club and actually uh, wanting to come back and play golf is one of my biggest goals when I work with beginners. I don't necessarily like to have one structured golf swing that I teach to everyone. Everybody. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well, help me find my individualized golfing tool. I think right. I'm ready to do I got this. You. Let's get this going. <laughs> okay. practicing on my swing because I haven't perfected it just yet. So I'm going to see you all later. I'm Nadja Parker with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Bye for now. You like checking out Ferraris, Lamborghinis, classic cars, and everything in between? Then the Caffeine and Octane Car Show, the first Sunday of every month at Perimeter Mall, is the place to be. The sound of pure power fills the parking lot at Perimeter Mall. It's here. You'll find some of the most expensive and unique cars on the planet once a month. This is a monthly gathering of what we call car enthusiasts. And uh, they come from really all over the southeast and all over the country right here in Dunwoody, Georgia to celebrate what they love, which is cars. The show began 12 years ago in East Cobb. A handful of guys who were crazy about cars would sneak away Sunday mornings when they didn't have a kid's soccer practice to attend to to talk horsepower and acceleration. 12 years later, the event now draws 2,000 vehicles and 15,000 fans from across the country on a monthly basis. But the focus hasn't changed. It's still all about the cars. This is actually my first time here. I'm from North Carolina, so I definitely haven't seen anything like this and not at this magnitude. And the beauty of it is, it's different from month to month. One month, attendees will see the Hum Rider. The next month, the Ford Performance Team. For the next it. month, a million dollar Porsche. Different people bringing different cars makes for a different show every month. The other beauty of caffeine and octane is the price. It's actually, it's free, believe it or not. It's one of the last great bargains around. Uh, it's free to exhibit your car and it's free to attend. Rain or shine, summer or winter, or somewhere in between, the first Sunday of every month from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., Perimeter Mall is packed. You haven't seen a car until you came out here. <laughs> Pretty much like that. If you want to hook something up, this is where you come. Welcome to Bad Axe Throwing in West Midtown Atlanta. I'm Heather Catlin here with Master Axe Thrower Evan Reed. Fantastic title. I think I kind of want that thank one. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's mine, so I don't know if you can have it. But it's mine. Okay, so tell me all about this. It's kind of like, I don't know, darts on steroids? Darts are, d darts are like uh, throwing knives on steroids, definitely. <laughs> so is this a group thing, like so before you hit the bars, host, come and... We have walk-ins. We also do um, birthday parties, private events, corporate events, all that stuff. And give me like a nice hard step, all just right. like that. So your body should be all into it. I would say everyone give me a nice bubble. All room. right, everybody clear out. <laughs> Almost, I'm clearly almost. not the master. Ah! Oh no! <laughs> no, don't record that one. The key to this is speed, not power. So you want to make sure that it's spun very, very fast. Okay. Just because it'll stick. Okay. Almost. Bye. That was fun. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Okay, so I can see why this can get really competitive. 
there we go. You're actually doing a lot better than most people. Like, way better. She's gonna take my job. <laughs> the game is like the first, there's 21. Four. Okay. It's not bad. I expect bulls out from you. Nothing less. Nice. Four again. That's not bad. Mm. Okay. Okay. Four and then four. Ah. Up. Ah. No. Oh, you wanted that, dude. <laughs> Are you trying to go for blue? I was going to go for blue. Ah. But you got the one. Yeah. You needed the one, so you won. I did. You do well against the Axe Master. <laughs> Thank you so much. No it was so much fun. Oh.